Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam bi madadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidiya Rasulul Kareem ya Habibul Azeem. Madadiya Sayyidiya Sultani Lawliya Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sayyidiya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabbani, Shaykh Adnan Kabbani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mawlana Khalik al Khushdawani. Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina Ali salam. Thumma Sayyidina Abba Qasadiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima al-Tazari alayhi salam, Musa'ira wa Sadatina, Siddiqina al-Fatiha. Malika al-Shafat ya Rasul al-Kareem Fa'awzu billahi min ash-shaitanir radeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul awal wal amri minkum And always a reminder for myself an abdukul ajis wa ta'ifu, miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence Fa'atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul awal wal amri minkum and in these holy months and difficult days this reality of guidance and to be guided to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and traversing through the realities of guidance that in our lives we may come across as a seeker many people who play a role in which to build us and begin to develop us. Not necessarily even they know that that's the role they play. Somebody taught them a little bit of Qur'an, somebody taught them some spirituality. So many people in our lives like actors in a play that Allah introduces to us and these become characters within our existence and our life. We may deem them to be our shaykh and our guide because this is the word that we… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We know, but the true one out of all the many we come across is the one that holds a secret to your reality. And if not through them the key, the opening doesn't occur. So one may call themselves a shaykh and, oh I'm a shaykh, I'm teaching then they come across that teaching or sometimes even no teaching and they say, I follow this shaykh, I was with this shaykh, I'm with this shaykh. Not all shaykhs are created the same. So this is not a uh, homogenized milk everyone is the same. These are just titles that people put upon themselves but not necessarily the title that Allah put upon insan and people. The one whom Allah has endowed with these guidance and these realities and they are the key holders. They hold the key of reality to the reality of the soul of the individual and the knowledges they teach 
or for that specific reason, not for entertainment. Because of the level of their training and what Allah has destined and opened for them, then this is a, a resource and ni'mat from Allah Many may come across and, and their teacher, shaykh, whatever they want to call them said they didn't teach these things because they didn't know these things. This is not what they were trained for and this was not the purpose that they served. The reality of the one whom holds these keys is the one whom we ultimately fall into their hands. And for every region, for whatever purpose and for whatever reality if it makes sense. If you're to reach a certain station somebody can't hold you back from that station because they tried to take you, you tried to take their hand. Your reality lies with someone else. So many people they become spiritual, they become interested, somehow they end up somewhere and say, I buy it. And that necessarily wasn't their final destination, that was just one stop on their journey towards the Divine. Until you reach the one whom holds a key into the depth of your soul and to your reality. And The sign of that key are the knowledges and what's being taught. If you're destined to go deep within yourself, you're destined to eat from these spiritual realities because this is a ni'mat, this is the ta'am, this is the food of the soul. Then you're destined to be at this table with this guide. If it doesn't make sense to you and it's a food that's of no interest to you, you're not destined for this guy. We don't have to sit to convince people, no, no, stay, it's not meant for you. Everyone's heart will move where Allah wants it, not where you wanted it because in life you choose many relationships. As we draw near to the end, they say in the time of Sayyidina Mahdi people will be with whom Allah wrote them to be in every aspect of their life. Whether it's their companionship, whether it's the spouse, whether it's their… anything around them, the relationships, spiritual, physical that we chose through our nafs, through our desires, hopefully sometimes they were pure, most likely people's impure desires, got them into relationships. But as we draw near to the heavenly kingdom opening upon this earth, in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi everything will be governed by Lahul Mahfuz, what's written. Not what we chose but what was written. No difference in guidance. Some people came across many people thinking they're the teacher, they took something from them, understood something but yet there was a deeper yearning. The deeper yearning in which they begin to be fed from these realities and it's a reality in which He's quenching their thirst and hunger because Allah created them to achieve that. You can't achieve what Allah hasn't written. We've had in 35-40 years of doing this people said, I don't even know what you're talking about shaykh most of the time and they said, it's not written for you, you know find something else that's… that is… is… is more li- to your liking because you can't make somebody eat what Allah has not put into their hunger. If you don't have the hunger from the way that we're teaching 
And the system that we put together and these realities, it's not something that you can force feed. And at the same time someone may be in conflict thinking, I'm sitting with a person I thought I'm supposed to be with but it does nothing for me. I don't understand, they don't teach anything, I don't even know what I'm doing. Am I bound to that? And in reality no, you're bound to follow the heart and what your heart is demanding from you on what it is required to quench its reality. Means I need to achieve these realities, I need to be fed constantly from these haqqaiqs and this insatiable appetite has to be met. And if I sit with someone else I feel as if I'm dying and it's not happening, I'm not getting what I'm, I'm, I'm needing and my time is running out, this earth is finishing. Because there's many emails coming in, not be like locked into this thing because you're talking about the bayad. The bayat that we're talking about is the one that is the true bayat. You may give many bayats in your life but you're assuming that you were on truth and you did it as, as what Allah had willed. But you could have been artificially grabbed by somebody that had no right to try to give you bayat. Many happen and again 35 years of we've seen people who roam into town trying to grab everybody's hand, hoping they can pick up all the, the, the fruits from the trees of a shaykh and the person doesn't even know that they're a part of that shaykh but these are the fruits of that shaykh, the shaykh they had even been studying by that shaykh for years. Somebody else came into town and tried to put a hand, so there are many like that, that you think you got into a contract. Now you don't even know was that a valid contract but you consider that in this way of haqqaiq that it was a step. I was to learn something but that was not my ultimate guide and that guy didn't hold the keys. And as a result the bayat that counts is the one that looks into the heart of Prophet and them. And that that is the key towards that individual's reality and that becomes important in the last days. That people who are not interested in this, not interested, don't push yourself, move on. Those whom are deeply interested in it means Allah put the hunger in you, we didn't. We, mean, we mainly feed you and Allah describes these people. They feed you for the sake of Allah's Divinely face. So you can't force people to feed, we don't put out the appetite to people, you have to, you, this is like in, you have to do this, you have to do this. But we teach a certain system and each shaykh may teach a different system, we can speak only to ourselves. When the person is coming and has, oh I'm actually hungry for this reality. Allah put that hunger in you, that's your shaykh. And if it's feeding you to the depth of your soul and to the door of Sayyidina Muhammad because many are astonished they don't really talk about that door. They have love for Prophet but they talk more about Allah. But that's a big danger because the door for the believer is Muhammadun Rasulullah it's not a second and a third door, it's not a fourth door in which you're all equal and in a line, it's the only door. And the only way to that door is to be taught that you're nothing, negate yourself in your binary code. So then that system of teaching has to occur and as a result means you're at the threshold of Muhammadun Rasulullah and those that teach that system they have a key for you. Follow their way, write the knowledges <coughs> so that you're documenting haqqaiqs. Later you can go back to 
validate also what you wrote so that you can say, oh did I understand that correctly? And it becomes burned upon your personality and your reality. So this is uh, for people to contemplate the many people we will come across in our lives but the true bayat is not the one that we only wanted to do because we wanted many things in life and look back at all the choices people have made and probably not so many of them you're proud of. But the choice that you made and finally reached to where the insatiable appetite within the soul is being quenched. Why? Because the one whom gives you, the one who controls your heart and gives you the hunger sits you at the table you're supposed to be at. So when they have a hunger and they're not being fed means keep as a salik searching. But when they arrive at that table and they feel that their soul is fed which are knowledges because the bounty of the shaykh is knowledges. We said we would go to events and symbolic there was no food. Remember there was crackers, cheese and grapes. For us means their provision is poor, there's no provision here. Not that they're poor because these are all people in western world with lots of money. But symbolically for us to understand there's no sustenance here because when guests come they're the guest of Allah. And as you put out from your bounty for the sake of your faith it's also symbolic that the shaykhs have a lot of uloom. If they're going to feed your belly imagine what they fed your heart. So means these were symbolic of being fed. So when we go somewhere where there's constantly nothing to eat, then imagine spiritual association with shaykhs is nothing. Then all of a sudden you see all those students are in Ba'alawi classes and other turuqs just sitting you see all the turbans in their audience. Why? Because Allah's just, they need food. They need something that Allah put a hunger in their soul, they need to seek it out. If you're not satisfying the hunger of people it's a spiritual oppression upon them. It's like eating in your home and all your students outside in your backyard are starving. So no the knowledge I have is for me but they're hungry I never feed them, I don't care. That's oppression and, and zulumat. So imagine spiritually, so the purpose of the shaykh was Allah gave that, why I'm giving you these knowledges? to go back and feed my creation. Not every creation but whoever has the hunger that I put into their heart they'll find you. No, you're not hard to find. When you have this hunger you know how to find it. You want pizza late at night you know where to find the pizza shop, it's not difficult. So it means that Allah has to put the hunger within the soul of people they will seek it out. That Reality of once you're being fed from that table your allegiance is locked to the detriment of your soul because you're now with your key into the heart of Prophet you can't pull that out. You can't say, now I'm a bystander. So that was the ayat of, of the bayat and the clarity that, oh is it all the people I've met in my life do I owe them allegiance? No. But the one whom you, is feeding you from the depth of their realities and the hunger that you have in your heart, you sat at their table and you realized it. And that's why Allah gives reference to these individuals that are not all the same. These are ones whom they feed you and all they want is from wajik al kareem that's very high for those to understand what is Wajik al kareem and that's why they teach it that this is the face of Prophet and that they're dressed by the face of Prophet whom is dressed by the Divinely face of Allah In reference to these knowledges the importance is to write. If they don't write they mix everything up.
in his understandings. So we talked about Sayyidina Mahdi People from left to right are talking, from east to west making up stories. Most of which are external dunya people that he will be randomly chosen and he'll be told, by the way, you are Sayyidina Mahdi salam. Uh, the shiyukh are not randomly chosen, not one of them come up as random, real ones. When they entered the tariqah immediately they were bombarded and immediately they were trained and immediately they were put into seclusions and crushed and crushed and crushed and crushed. You don't derive at any station overnight because this takes away from many particles of faith, many realities of faith. Allah is not reactive, Allah doesn't look to the earth and say, now is the time, activate him. It's not reacting to what we do, it has been written. Imam Mahdi who he is has been written. He has been born, he's been trained and he sits into a anjuman, into a circle of awliya in which None can physically achieve in case governments are listening and say, take us there. It's blocked off for all physicality. But to understand there must be immense training that he immensely knows himself because who knows himself must know his Lord. Who doesn't know himself doesn't even know Allah. Doesn't even know Prophet doesn't know anything. So that's not the tariqah. The tariqah is he's the master and the most high Muhammadan guide Allah has created. A descendant from Imam Ali salam through the bloodline of Imam and Hussein salam. Most powerfully aware of himself his Lord and his Qudra. 1973 was born and we'll post the article that Mawlana Sharafuddin Sultan al-Awliya with Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani Sultan al-Awliya described that we have a meeting, important majlis tonight and the whole story we'll post in which they went with Haqiqat al-Faiz with the infancy of Imam Mahdi salam into the masjid of the holy companions in Turkey, underground masjid. And the purpose of that was to bless the child, to dress the child <coughs> and all of the spiritual security that would encompass his reality. And as a result of his being raised on the earth in Mecca when the signs became too apparent of his reality he was taken to Rubba Khalil. Rubba Khalil is the empty quarters within Arabia and it looks like a line in the sand and it's exact reflection of the line in Mars. The planet Mars that represents Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, there's a line going through the sand what they call the empty quarter. Empty quarter because they know this is the area of the jinn. Not only regular jinn but the jal that over hundreds of feet tall in which anything that tries to even move physically into that region immediately will vanish. Their power directly from Allah 
So it's not something physical and I think many of the world's armies have tried to fly through there and try to look through there. And immediately the jinn bring everything down and those things go vanished into that region. In this region there's the happy cave, was it Thawr Swada, Suswada? The happy cave, why happy? Because the immense behesh and paradise realities Allah has put within this cave in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi And as a result of the presence of Imam Mahdi the Sultan al-Jinn and all the big Sultan al-Jinn that guard and are all around that reality and in his presence. His physical presence surrounded by 50 deputies and behind these 50 deputies are the 49 Nawab and Khalifas that stand right at the gate of that deputy. Which I believe they made now 59 deputies and 40, 59 Khalifas and the 40 deputies behind. The Ruhaniyat is in a continuous state as he is their nucleus and they are his electrons. Their wujud circumambulates his reality at all times. Uh, he is Sahib al-Imdad, why he's the nucleus? That he holds all tariqahs and he's known through the Naqshbandi way because the Naqshbandi shaykhs were responsible for the tarbiyah and the raising and the uloom and the knowledges. So Naqshbandiya is the soul of all tariqahs, Imam Mahdi is Naqshbandi in his zuhur of coming out because of his presence and who he is in relationship to Prophet all tariqahs will be named Muhammadiyah, that there's no name in the presence of the named one. So the Muhammadiyah, Muhammadiyoon is the way of Sayyidina Mahdi And those whom Allah has destined as these levels of guides and those guides who know themselves in those categories of deputies and, and uh, khalifas to Sayyidina Mahdi If they had been trained, because it's not known by people who are not from that category and understanding. If they have been trained they would understand that the ruhaniyat is in that presence. They take the fires and the energy of that presence and the qudra to wherever their physicality is, is dressed from that reality. If you were to grab them and say, take me to that physicality, not possible, it's encrypted and locked. That physicality is not for anything. It's only through their spirituality. Anyone who thinks they're trained in remotely having a vision to enter, all of that is spiritually encrypted and that nothing can be seen whom is not authorized. So the physicality is on this earth, the zuhur means that when does he come out of the cave? Those are cataclysmic events upon the earth that when shaitan and the Dajjal system wants to kill six out of seven people because the, they call people cattle and cows like animals. They don't think they're humans, they categorize them as animals therefore they can slaughter them. When they try to slaughter six out of seven of Allah's creation Sayyidina Mahdi walking out and appearing 
is to save creation. Means when the order comes, they are killing, they are killing, they are killing those whom Allah destined and wrote for them not to be killed, they're from those one out of the seven. Six out of the seven will pass. Within the one out of the seven are those whom are mahfuz. Their entire bloodlines have been guarded. And we described in other talks because shaitans will try to move through timelines to kill you. If he thinks that you're somebody important with Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, go to kill your ancient grandfather so you no longer exist. But they're guarded, mahfuz. Allah created this system and He knows what power He's giving to this shayateen and Allah plans better. As a result they are guarded individuals, those whom will be destined to live throughout this cataclysmic events that will occur upon the earth, they should be guarded by heavenly guards. The power of that guidance coming from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. That's why now these ayahs are coming out, these teachings and knowledges are coming out as decrees that fix yourself protect yourself, make your connection. If you're waiting like reactive mentality, oh I won't do anything shaykh until I see the entire world burned down. This is very, very bad thinking. The proactive mentality is that, I think I believe enough and I don't need Allah to take us to that level, I want to be nothing. If you train to be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing, what did we describe last night? Everyone in these bombed and destroyed areas they're beginning to see. Why? Because Allah took away the one. When all that people worship is brought to dust, what's left? But pure worshipness to the heavens, they see the angels, they see the light. They, they see the Divinely Presence within their heart because they believe. The dunya was a distraction to them to really believe. But the one whom is in tafakkur and contemplation and the fire is from the heart of Prophet to the heart of Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi Salaam is such an immense power, it will shatter the hearts of people and bring down all their dunya. Not that they don't have homes and they'll be on the streets, but the desire of the dunya collapse because the emanation of the heavens is so beautific, <coughs> so powerful. It is sufficient for the believer. When Allah describes, I am sufficient for the believer, why? Because of the fires, the ecstasy and the beatific energies of Allah if it hits the heart of the servant is enough. All the dunya in the world can't compare to that energy. And there's many stories of awliya's lives and the holy companions that, you know, pull my teeth and, uh, and they would be in tafakkur, pull and nothing would happen. Their physicality not affected because they're in the lights and in the fires of Allah's Divinely Presence. When they do their tafakkur, do their contemplation, reduce themselves in their understanding to be a nukh, to be a nukh, then these fires and these energies begin to come out. As a result of their tafakkur and contemplation, the key to their understanding is the shaykh. Your charity, your giving food, your sharing articles gets you a seat in the tafakkur. Because now you come to the arjaman, atishagol, come to the, the association whom they all sit around this beatific flame. Its entry is good deeds, 
but it wasn't the opening. You merely got to sit now into the arjaman, your relationship to the shaykh, your loyalty to the shaykh, your understanding is to connect your heart to the shaykh, efface yourself to be nothing. Why? Because the mirror of Prophet will hit Sayyidina Mahdi from Sayyidina Mahdi his reflection because it's like satellite dishes. If the main satellite hits you, you're dead. If Allah send His light upon you, His glory upon you like Sayyidina Musa wanted and Allah says, you can't. And even when Allah sent the more powerful signal from Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Musa was what? Reset and qashiyah, been dust. But since Allah won't bring us back by requesting that, the system of this support is reflective mirroring like satellites that Prophet began to send the fires to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi Sayyidina Mahdi began to send the fires to the shaykh. And if you're sitting in front of the shaykh like your satellite, like your mirror, your dish and as you sit in front of him his satellite energies are going to begin to project. And as a result of projecting it begin to burn away all of the calcifications of dunya, all of the corruption of dunya, all of the desires of dunya. But you still have home, still have car, still have work, still have everything. But the, what Allah replaced of akhirah is so much sweeter that that temptation is no longer taking the servant in which Allah describes, I think Surat Al-Nur, neither business nor trade deflects them or what would be another word, distracts them from the remembrance of Allah Not that they don't do business and trade but they're not distracted by it, they're on a mission. But the light that Allah sends to them is far more superior far more powerful than anything and any fun that the dunya would have to offer them. So that fires has to come otherwise the nafs of people won't switch. They don't feel anything, they say, oh it's more fun to I go out and work and go to movie, go do these things. But when they begin to feel the fires, begin to feel the energies, it's, uh, maybe I can you know not do that, I'll do this. This is a lot more powerful, there's a lot more energy coming, a lot more experience is coming. We pray that Allah give us a greater understanding and the importance of the madad and support, the importance of connecting our hearts and that the light and the energies that are all coming now, the knowledges are coming now, the Qur'an uh, understandings that are not normal understandings, these are all the Mahdiyun time. These are all the time of Sayyidina Mahdi and every ayah coming out and from all the different shaykhs whatever is coming out of guidance, true guidance is coming from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi And those whom are connected to Sayyidina Mahdi they don't talk ridiculous things. They talk that of course he knows himself, of course he's powerful, of course he's energized and of course the shaykhs have to be sitting in his presence. Not something random, it's not a reactive world where something happens based on Allah reacting. It's proactive, it has already been planned and there are people who have been put into action and to been put into their realities. We pray that Allah give us a greater understanding and the immensity of the responsibilities to represent the kingdom of light against the, the darkness and oppression of dunya, Bi Hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa. The Sira Surat Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.